Hmm. Okay, so the first thing that pops into my mind was my uh, first Sports Illustrated cover shot in Aruba. And it's not that it was in any way hellish. I mean, I was on the beach. But it was 5.30 a.m. And we, I had applied my makeup in the dark in the van on the way there, driving to the beach for an hour. And I had, was doing my mascara when we stopped for red light. Um, and it was freezing. It was absolutely and utterly freezing. And so um, I thought most of the pictures, most of the, 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 the cover shoot, actually I looked kind of sad. And uh, But my tan looks much darker because I think I was turning purple. <laughs> But it's not in protest of your story. You can read my story. I read yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gosh, I, uh, would you be so kind? I seem to be a little taller. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right. So my double vision. Uh, and uh, so this double vision comes in really handy, especially when I travel, right? Uh, generally, I just stick on one pair of eyes, and I sort of leave the other ones resting. If I go to an impoverished place, I put on my communist vision, and everything's okay. And if I, you know, if I'm in a lap of luxury like here, I have my capitalist set of eyes. So this was um, this story happened in Romania, uh, probably about ten years or so ago. The first switch was the drive from the luxury hotel to the ancient communist regime television studio. It had an undeserved reputation as the best studio in the country since it was the only one in the country. The road was paved for a good half of the way, but even on the paved parts, my tiny Mercedes and a uniformed driver were often stuck behind a horse and carriage driven by an ancient weather-beaten man or an ancient toothless Conan in a babushka. <laughs> Thinly, thin, poorly dressed Roma children lined some parts of the road, hands outstretched, at the ungodly hours of 4 and 5 o'clock a.m. in the morning. Judd Nelson, my co-star, stopped every time, giving away all his per diem in the first two days. At night, we visited guilt-dripping casinos with all the accoutrements of Las Vegas and walked back to our revolution that had deposed and executed Ceausescu ten years earlier. The worst part of taking a walk through the city, though, were the dogs. Hordes of semi-wild, mangy, hungry, desperate dogs. It was at some point explained to us that Ceausescu had, towards the end of his reign, forcibly ejected thousands of people from their homes to build nicer looking buildings without much caring where the evicted folks would go. Well, I guess they went somewhere because I never saw homeless people. But they left their dogs to fend for themselves. Some of these homeless dogs went feral and chased us with growls and snarls from what they considered their corners. But some wagged their tails and followed us for blocks. Some just lay there so sick and hungry they exhausted themselves with the efforts of lifting their heads when you passed. And even if you weren't an animal lover, it would still break your heart to see a four-week-old puppy dying between the paws of its mother would nudge it toward you in the last attempt to save her baby. And if you wanted to rescue it, there were at least five more in the same walk. Larry, Judd, and I stopped taking walks. 